What's up guys and welcome back to Wall Street Millennial. With new strains of coronavirus such as the Delta variant popping up across the globe, there are increasing fears that the pandemic will be with us much longer than we originally thought. Many developing countries have limited access to vaccines, and their cases are surging. Many investors have piled into reopening stocks such as airlines and cruise lines on optimism around the global return to normal. But given the risks, it may also be prudent to own some vaccine plays which can benefit from the new variants. In this video, we're going to go over one vaccine play which offers a hedge against the reopening stocks and trades at ridiculously cheap valuations. Keep in mind that we are not financial advisors and this video is for entertainment purposes only. Make sure to do your own research and consult with a professional before making any investment decision. The stock we're talking about is Pfizer, ticker symbol PFE. Pfizer made the first vaccine approved by the FDA in December of 2020 with an efficacy rate of 95%. It uses the novel method of messenger RNA, or mRNA, to prevent infection. This is similar to what Moderna uses in its vaccine, and they're already starting to see the benefit of vaccine sales. In the second quarter of 2021, they beat analyst expectations on the top and bottom lines, which were boosted by $7.8 billion of vaccine sales for the quarter. They also said that they expect to sell $33.5 billion worth of vaccines for the full year of 2021. Despite the massive benefit that they get from the vaccine, Pfizer's stock has only increased less than 20% since pre-pandemic levels, which has added a little under $40 billion to their market cap. Moderna, which uses the similar mRNA technology as Pfizer, has seen its stock price increase 1,500%, and its market cap has increased by more than $120 billion. Pfizer guided for $4 of earnings per share, which will give them a price-to-earnings ratio of roughly 10 times 2021 earnings. This seems like an incredibly cheap valuation given the strong outlook for vaccine sales. Pfizer is currently the world's third largest global vaccine supplier. As of March 2021, they had contracts to supply 1.17 billion vaccines, mostly to the US, EU, and Japan. These are all wealthy countries which have more than enough money to pay for the vaccines. Moderna only has contracts for 765 million vaccines. But with the new fears around the Delta variant, the company has signed even more vaccine contracts. In their second quarter earnings, they said that they now expect to deliver 2.1 billion doses of the vaccine and make $33.5 billion of revenue. This means that they are charging about $16 per dose. They expect to make a high 20s percentage point pre-tax margin for the sales. This means that they will make roughly $4.50 of profit for every single dose that they sell. It's important to remember that almost all governments in developed countries pay for the vaccine and give it to the people for free. So cost is not an issue. As long as they can win contracts with governments, they'll be able to sell the doses at favorable prices. As of July 28, 28% of the world population has received at least one dose, and 14% have been fully vaccinated. With two doses required for full vaccination, this means that there could be demand for another 10 billion doses before getting everyone vaccinated. But the opportunity may be much greater even than this. Some of the new variants are more resistant to the vaccine and will require booster shots possibly as often as every six months. An update on its strategy around potential booster shots that might be needed uh, against COVID-19. They are saying that while it looks promising just to give a third potential booster of their original uh, vaccine in terms of boosting the antibody levels, out of precaution, they are developing a Delta-targeted uh, booster, potential booster shot um, that they anticipate beginning clinical trials of in August if they get the FDA's go-ahead. Uh, they don't know that this will be needed, but they are developing it just in case. Now, they are also saying that what they've seen from real-world evidence, including from Israel, uh, makes them more convinced that they uh, think we're going to need boosters uh, within 6 to 12 months after full vaccination. They say, uh, based on the data they've seen, quote, while protection against severe disease remained high across the full six months, the observed decline in efficacy against symptomatic disease over time and the continued emergence of variants are key factors driving our belief that a booster dose will likely be necessary to maintain highest levels of protection. Uh, so, Mel, they are covering all their bases, making sure they're prepared against Delta if they need it, uh, but saying they are reassured by what they've seen already in the data of their original vaccine. In Israel, the vaccine's efficacy was reduced to 64% after six months. In response to this development, Pfizer and BioNTech are seeking authorization for a booster shot targeting the Delta variant. Both the FDA and the EU regulator say a third shot is not necessary at this time, but once the entire population receives the first doses, they will likely approve the booster shot. It's hard to overstate how good the new variants are for Pfizer. If people have to get annual booster shots, they will make stable recurring revenue for many years to come. 
In the second quarter of 2021, they generated $9.2 billion of vaccine sales, which is almost half of their total revenue. The strong vaccine sales caused the company to increase their revenue and earnings guidance for the full year of 2021. They now expect to make sales of $78 to $80 billion, which is a more than 10% increase over their previous guidance. The profits from the vaccine will also boost their adjusted earnings per share to $4 per share. In addition to the COVID vaccine, they are also making progress on other segments. They are working on treatments for breast cancer, kidney disease, gene therapy, and Lyme's disease. They are also applying their messenger RNA technology to make an mRNA flu vaccine which could also give recurring revenue every single flu season. So now that we know the growth drivers behind Pfizer's business, let's look into their financials to see how much the stock is worth. In 2021, they expect to deliver 2.1 billion doses of their COVID vaccine, which they will sell for $15.95 each. The vaccine sales will decrease going forward as most of the population becomes vaccinated. But as new variants appear, they will still have significant sales from booster shots. We estimate that sales will decrease until they level off at $750 million in 2024. They've told us that they expect to make a high 20s percentage point pre-tax profit on the vaccines. They'll make more than $9 billion in vaccine profits in 2021 alone. They currently have a strong pipeline of cancer drugs and other vaccines which will drive their growth going forward. We assume that the rest of their business, excluding the COVID vaccines, will grow at 5% per year over the next 5 years. They also said that they expected a 16% effective tax rate for the year. The accounting for pharmaceutical companies can be a bit complicated, so they used adjusted profit, which excludes things such as amortization of intangible assets, which are non-cash expenses. The adjusted income is the simplest number to look at when evaluating the company. Their guidance is $4 of earnings per share in 2021. After 2021, earnings will moderate somewhat, down to a little over $3.50 per share. Declines in the COVID vaccine business will be partially offset by growth in the rest of the business. At $4 of EPS, the stock currently trades for a price-to-earnings ratio of 10.7 times. At a more conservative EPS of $3.50, once vaccines saturate, the price-to-earnings ratio would be 12.2 times. To put into perspective how cheap that is, let's compare Pfizer to one of its closest competitors, Moderna. Both of their vaccines use messenger RNA, which is a new method for delivering vaccines. mRNA contains genetic instructions for cells in your body to create the same spike proteins which are on the coronavirus. This allows your immune system to create antibodies, which will defend you if you're exposed to the real virus. Unlike Pfizer, Moderna had zero revenue prior to the pandemic, and today all of their revenue is dependent on their COVID vaccine. The stock has increased roughly 17-fold and the market cap sits at $138 billion. For the full year of 2021, they're expected to make $18 billion of revenue. This is roughly half of what Pfizer expects to make from their COVID vaccine. Moderna is also expected to make $24.57 of earnings per share. This gives them a 14 times price to earnings ratio for 2021. But their earnings will decrease significantly in 2022 as most people become vaccinated. In 2020, Pfizer will make a little under $8 billion of after-tax profits from the COVID vaccine based on their guidance. If we apply the same 14 times multiple that Moderna has, this makes the new vaccine business worth $110 billion. Their market cap was $200 billion before COVID, so we can add these two numbers together to get a sum of the parts valuation of $310 billion. Pfizer's market cap has increased by $40 billion, so they didn't get nearly as much credit as Moderna for their vaccine development. With a $310 billion market cap, Pfizer's stock would be worth $52.60 per share today which represents 25% upside at the time of recording this video. At the current prices, Pfizer looks incredibly undervalued compared to Moderna. The main bull case for Moderna is that they can use their mRNA technology to develop new vaccines and treatments for other diseases in the future. While this is true, it is also true for Pfizer. If anything, Pfizer has an even greater ability to develop new mRNA drugs because they are such a massive company and have much more resources. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about Pfizer? Do you have any other vaccine plays that you like better? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.